Howdy freeze dryers, welcome back to Live Life Simple. Today we are in the freeze drying room, not the kitchen, because today we're making a video that is long, long overdue. We're talking about the dreaded inadequate vacuum error. And the vacuum error is going to most likely affect 100% of freeze dryers at some point in their freeze drying career. And I'm hoping that this video can be a good resource uh, in order to just take a, take a, a step back and kind of troubleshoot your vacuum error problems. And we're gonna start with the easiest problems and work our way up to the more difficult problems. Hopefully you don't have to make it that far. I'm also gonna put everything in chapters so you can take it step by step. Uh, so let's get right to it. If you are lucky enough that you have never had an inadequate vacuum error, uh, just count your blessings for now because really it just stops a freeze dryer in its tracks. There's no convenient time for it to ever happen. It's always uh, seemed like in the middle of your freeze drying cycle and it kind of just makes you want to one thing's for sure, it's always frustrating, but it could really just be something very, very simple. And for diagnosis, we're gonna start with the easiest stuff. We're gonna work our way up to uh, more difficult stuff, but we'll start with the easiest stuff, which is also usually the most common. And before we get started on these, I really wanna mention if your freeze dryer is under warranty, first thing and foremost, contact Harvest Right before you do any of this stuff because some of this stuff could potentially void your warranty if you're not in communication with them. Uh, you can always watch the video and kind of see what you're up against or what you can expect. This is all gonna be done at your own risk. I wanna make that very, very clear. All right, first you need to make sure that your vacuum pump is plugged in to the harvest right, not into the wall. It needs to go into this specific plug because the freeze dryer tells the vacuum pump when to turn on. So the cord coming from the vacuum pump needs to go into that outlet. This is for the freeze dryer itself and harvest right really has made it pretty idiot proof so you can't mess it up. Next, we need to make sure that the vacuum pump itself is turned on. And depending on what pump you have, I have an older version of the Premier pump. Just make sure that that switch is on also. Next, make sure that your fittings for your hose are only hand tight in both locations and you don't want any kind of sealant, no Teflon, no pipe dope, nothing like that. If you've used a wrench other than your hands or your fingers and uh, you've put any kind of Teflon or sealant or anything on, take it off, start over, hand tight. This next one might sound completely obvious, but unfortunately I'll admit I've done it more than I would like to admit. Make sure that your valve is closed. That means that your valve needs to be a 90 degree to the hose itself, just like that. It's not out of the question to forget to close that valve, even just not get it closed all the way and go through your whole freezing cycle. And then when this baby kicks on into drying cycle, uh, your valve isn't closed, so it's not going to start a vacuum. It's gonna throw up that code and that could sit there for hours before you notice it. Next, you wanna make sure that the vacuum pump is 100% ready to go. This is the workhorse of the freeze dryer. This is kind of the, uh, the lifeblood of the whole freeze drying system. If this doesn't have the right kind of oil, in it or it's not filled properly or the oil needs changed or something it could uh, it could definitely throw up a vacuum air and I'm sure many people would tell you that was the cause of their inadequate vacuum air next you need to make sure that you have the right kind of oil in your vacuum pump but usually vacuum pump oil is some sort of mineral oil it's not just a, a like car oil or something what a lot of people don't realize is that the vacuum pump oil actually serves more purposes than just uh, lubricating the system it actually helps helps with the vacuum sealing, it helps keep it cool. The oil in this thing does a lot more. You also wanna make sure that you have the correct amount of oil in here and that the oil is clean. If it's not clean, change it right away. That could solve your vacuum problem first thing. But you wanna make sure that the oil is cool when you check it. The ideal situation for oil is about halfway on this Premier pump. But keep in mind that oil pumps change, things change over time. This video will date itself at some point and uh, that won't necessarily be relevant anymore. So always refer to your manual first. Another thing to consider is that you want the oil to be cool and you don't want your pump to be running. You want it to be just idle. Because once it starts running, the oil will start to circulate through the pump and the reading is not going to be accurate. It's gonna read lower, so keep that in mind. 
Also make sure that your oil pump is sitting on a flat and level surface when you check the oil. So if you've tried all the obvious stuff and you are 100% certain that your vacuum pump is working correctly, another big place where there could be some potential for error is this thing right here. This is your rubber gasket or your vacuum chamber gasket. Some people call it a door gasket. And the purpose of this gasket is to make a seal in between the plexiglass door and the vacuum chamber. First, before we get into this part, I wanna make sure that you you know if you have an older freeze dryer that has a, uh, an insulation pillow or you've purchased an aftermarket insulation pillow, take the pillow out and try and vacuum without that pillow in there because that can easily create a vacuum problem. It can easily get pinched in between this gasket and the, uh, the vacuum chamber and just not cause this to seal correctly. So the first and easiest thing to do is check and make sure that this is clean. Make sure there's no debris, no food, no funky imperfections or anything on the gasket itself. If that looks good, pull it off, it just comes off real easy. And by pulling this off, that allows you to see the back side of this, where this little crevice is. This is where the, uh, the vacuum chamber itself rides inside the seal, but that can also get gummed up with stuff or have imperfections in it. So take it, pull it apart, and make sure that there's nothing funky going on inside. You can take a Q-tip and clean this out. You can, uh, you can inspect the whole thing. If there's any kind of imperfections in here or just uh, something that doesn't look right, consult Harvest Right. They can get you a new door gasket and you'll be on your way. But before you do that, there's also a way that you can test to see see if your door gasket is working properly. And if you're gonna clean this out, make sure you just use soap and water. Don't use any kind of chemicals or anything, but some good old soap and water works great. You also, before you put this back on, I would check the chamber itself, make sure there's no sharp edges, make sure there's no rough spots that could also potentially cause a vacuum leak. One other thing you can do to check to make sure that this is working properly is do a vacuum test. We're gonna do that right now. So make sure that your valve is closed, make sure your door is closed, make sure your pump is functioning properly, has all the oil and all that stuff that we talked about earlier. Make sure that that's all 100%. You also wanna make sure that you can see this nice ring that's kinda of lining up evenly around that seal. You want it to ideally be all the way around or at least very, very close. If all that stuff looks good, depending on your software, you can usually hit this leaf right here. That'll take you to a testing screen and then you can manually test all of the items on your freeze dryer. We're gonna test the vacuum, so you're gonna press that. You're gonna hear a slight click and a little bit of a delay and then you're gonna hear your vacuum pump kick on. So you'll notice this number right here is gonna start out pretty large. This is your mTOR, but this is basically the, uh, the vacuum that's inside of your chamber. And this will dramatically drop at first, but eventually it's gonna kind of slow down and mellow out and kind of hit a flat spot. And just for reference purposes, later on in the video, if you need to use it, we'll call that bottoming out the vacuum, uh, because really that's what it is, is you're, you're taking the vacuum, the lowest it can possibly get, where it pretty much is not moving up or down either way. All right, so mine's been running for almost three minutes now. It's down to about 1500 millitors, and you'll notice that this, uh, this seal that we were talking about earlier has gotten real fat, real wide. That's a good thing, that's what you're looking for, because that shows you that your, your chamber is under vacuum. So there's really not a magic number on how long this should take. Mine actually has made me realize it's, it, mine's going pretty slow, so I might have a slow leak somewhere. <laughs> so, But once you've bottom out the vacuum, you want to just click the vacuum off, because you wanna take the vacuum part of it out of the equation. You want this to hold a vacuum, that's the whole point of the vacuum chamber. Once you've stopped the vacuum, you're gonna take some soapy water like this and you're going to just pour it over the top of this seal. And you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to this seal right here. If you have a vacuum leak in this gasket, that soapy water is gonna suck into that seal and you're gonna notice it. So I'm not noticing any vacuum leaks on my seal, so it looks like I'm good. I'm gonna move on to the next step. So what are you gonna do if you have a vacuum seal and you see that soap going into the vacuum chamber? You could possibly just need to adjust your door or your vacuum chamber itself. This freeze dryer is a 2022 model. It's the newest version at the time of this recording, but most of them are relatively close to the same as far as where your adjustment points are at. So I would say the first thing I would do is you need to let the vacuum out of the chamber first. Once that's done, make sure you dry off the seal, 
clean all of that area up in case this next step does not solve your problem. But that's going to expose these four adjustment points. There's one here, one here, one here, one here. There's four that you can actually take the chamber and slightly, you can tighten it up, loosen it up if you need to. Don't over tighten. Also do not over loosen if that's even a word. Really what you're trying to do is make this so it sits as flush as possible. If that does not work, it could very well be your door. That's a very common problem. On the door there are two adjustments, one at the top here and then one at the bottom as well. I believe these are new to this newer model. I think this is just to uh, to mount this bracket that's on the back side of this. We can take a look at that when we get later in the video. But what this does is if you tighten this down, it will bring the door in this way. If you loosen it, it will bring the door out this way. So with some combination of adjusting the door and adjusting the chamber, hopefully you can get that nice even seal all the way around and it fix your vacuum problem. Unfortunately, there's not really a magic uh, formula to get this done. It's just gonna vary from freeze dryer to freeze dryer. And just so you know for reference in this model and most models, these adjustments and the door adjustments are a hex head. They're a 532nd size. So if that didn't work for you, we're gonna move on to the hose, which we kind of touched on earlier. This is another very common place for problems to happen. You want to make sure that these are only hand tight. If they're not hand tight, if you've used a tool or Teflon or anything like that, make sure you take that off and try that out. But next thing we're looking for is this little O-ring inside here. There's a little black, a gasket kind of looks like a smaller version of the door gasket and fortunately for us those are easily replaced at any hardware store you can find them at ace or home depot lowe's any place similar to that you also want to be checking inside of there for debris junk imperfections things like that if that does not solve the problem next we need to look at the fittings for the freeze dryer and for the vacuum pump. Any of these fittings, we're checking for imperfections, we're checking for debris, anything like that. We wanna make sure that that's getting a nice clean contact with the hose. In the newer versions, this fitting is actually all one piece into the chamber. On the older versions, there is a fail point uh, which would have an O-ring in it also. It's a fitting where it meets together. That's another spot that you're going to want to check. And these hoses at the crimps have also been known to leak. There's a simple solution for that to see if that's what your problem is. You can actually get some self-sealing uh, silicone tape, or it could also be called self-fusing silicone tape. That can help with those crimps at both sides and might be a less expensive option than ordering a new hose or having to wait for a new hose. It could be uh, the problem and it could get you back up and running. So if this hasn't helped you so far, there's still plenty of options, we'll call them. Unfortunately, they're options that you don't really want to have, but at this point you probably uh, you need to have them. We're going to go back to vacuum testing the machine again so we can diagnose further from here. So we're going to want to close our valve again. We're going to want to go to the testing screen. Uh, if you have an older model, I believe it's uh, something like test, but you can always try to hold down certain things in the screen. Sometimes it's in a corner, just different versions of software. They've changed so much over the last few years even that it might be a different thing. If your freeze dryer is so old that it does not have the ability to do the self function, you can still do this by plugging your vacuum pump into the wall directly so it turns on and building up a nice vacuum in your chamber uh, and you can just kind of eliminate the software end of it. So we're gonna go ahead and turn on the vacuum and then we're going to bottom out the mTOR level once again. But this time we want to eliminate any kind of variables that are possible to cause this vacuum problem. So we're gonna take this seal off once again and we're gonna remove the rack. So what that entails is just pulling that completely out. You're gonna have a little electrical connector right here. There are a few different versions. Most of them just kind of have a press clip thing. I like to support both ends of this because I don't like to put pressure on the wires themselves, but these will pull apart just like that. And then once that is out, your rack is free and you can set it aside. And then you can just toss this cord back inside the chamber and then make sure that your chamber is free of water, food, any kind of debris, anything like that. Then put your gasket back on. We're gonna close the door and we're gonna turn that manual vacuum switch back on with our valve closed. And then we're just gonna go ahead and bottom out that vacuum mTOR again until it just really is not moving any longer. 
And while we're waiting for our mTOR to drop down, I want to mention too that this screen, this test screen, is, is very helpful for a lot of different things because you can manually turn on things in your freeze dryer. There's also an auxiliary relay, which means there may be some uh, future happenings happening with the freeze dryer. I don't know, I, I'm not sure why they have that or if it's just so they have an extra in case one fails. Um, but this is a very handy screen to know. So just as a reference, I like to have my mTORs at about 500 or below. And mine is actually taking about five and a half to six minutes to get there. I don't know if that's good or not. That's just uh, what you can use as a baseline. Once you've bottomed out your mTOR, turn that vacuum back off. We're gonna take our same glass of water. It doesn't have to be soapy necessarily, but we're gonna take our drain hose from the, uh, the freeze dryer or the vacuum chamber drain and we're gonna stick that hose into this water and we're gonna let it sit for a minute or two and we're gonna see if we notice anything happening. And as a note, I wanna mention that if you've purchased the no suck kit from freeze drying supplies, you need to take that no suck kit off and put just the hose directly back onto this elbow or the valve again, uh, because this will eliminate it otherwise. But what you're looking for is if you have a slow leak in your valve, which is a very common problem, you're gonna to start to see water creep up this hose. So we need to take the next step. So a slow drop in mTOR is somewhat acceptable. Like I said, I have a, a slow leak, it looks like. But if you notice water going up this straw, you probably have more than a slow leak. Uh, if you did not notice it, we need to take this brass fitting off. This has Teflon on it. And what we're trying to do is diagnose whether or not this valve is leaking. And I can speak from experience that I don't really like these valves. They're not very good quality. And really I would recommend if you're doing all of this stuff right now anyway, I would just replace that valve. You can probably pick one up at a hardware store for 10 or $15 or whatever. That's gonna be a lot better quality. It's gonna be brass. And these valves do just naturally deteriorate over time. The defrost water that comes from freeze drying is uh, and can be slightly acidic and really just kind of deteriorates the parts in these valves over time. So at some point, if you freeze dry long enough, you probably will have to replace one of these valves. Our next step, you can do two different ways. You can pull this brass fitting off and re-Teflon everything and try this whole vacuum test again, or you can pull this off you can get a little bit of Windex or carburetor cleaner, something similar to that. And you're just gonna wanna give that fitting a squirt. And then we're gonna watch the mTOR levels. And if that mTOR level starts jumping up dramatically, then you know you found where the leak is. And what we're gonna do, if that's not your leak, we're basically just gonna have to trace the vacuum line up into the freeze dryer until we do find that leak. And that means you're gonna wanna check this black little fitting right here and then check your mTOR and then you're also going to want to check this this fitting right here and the teflon as well as the crimp and after each area that you pinpoint make sure you check your mTOR again because that's going to tell you where the leak potentially is i've also seen some cases where this little lever can just get loose so just even tightening this thing up can make the difference also, one last thing before we go to the next step. Uh, if you're using carb cleaner or something like that, make sure that you're mindful of that this is going to potentially go into your freeze drying chamber and then potentially be around food in the future. Make sure you clean all that up before you uh, you are done with the whole diagnosis process. So if you've come all this way and you still have not found your vacuum leak, we're gonna have to do something that no freeze dryer ever wants to have to do. We're gonna have to pull some covers off of the freeze dryer. Just hang in there, we're gonna do this together and we're gonna walk step by step on how to do this. Unplug your vacuum pump, unplug the freeze dryer plug, and then we're gonna take, there's quite a few uh, hex screws all the way around. They're a 1 8 hex size, and uh, I've already taken most of mine off just to kind of speed up this process. Once all those are out, this cover is just gonna come straight off. This is something that, unless you're uh, mechanically minded, you probably never really wanted to see, but now that we're here, we have a few more parts that we can check. While we have this pulled off, I wanna show you what I was talking about earlier. This piece right here where the hose comes in, this is all integrated into the vacuum chamber on the newer models. There is a fitting here on the older units, so you might wanna check that, especially now that you have this pulled off. The other thing that we need to check is where our vacuum hose comes in 
and connects to the chamber right here, this brass fitting. This will vary slightly in different models, um, but we're gonna basically spray and do the same exact diagnosis as we did on the valve as well. So that means take your carb cleaner, take your Windex, whatever you're using, we're gonna spray right onto this crimp. We're gonna spray onto the fitting right here. This one actually does have some Teflon on it, so that could be a potential fail spot. You wanna do this under vacuum. You're still checking to see if that mTOR level is gonna jump up. And something that's probably just a little bit less common, but a potential problem would be the hose itself. So spray some on the hose itself too and see if you can see a leak anywhere, if you notice any changes on the actual hose, cause it could just have a pinhole or something in it. If you do end up needing one of these hoses, I'm not sure that this is proprietary sizing or anything to Harvest Right. Um, I believe it's a three quarter inch size. So you might be able to pick something like that up at a hardware store, but I, I know for a fact that you can get one from Harvest Right. Well, if you've made it this far, I feel extremely bad for you because you probably are questioning your purchasing choices, have a few choice words for the company, etc. but it can only be one more thing and that is your vacuum feed and you probably have an epoxy leak. This is, I believe, a vacuum sensor and it contacts the, uh, the vacuum chamber and anything that contacts that vacuum chamber has a potential of a vacuum leak. And in order to do this fix or test, you're gonna have to take this top panel off. I figured out the hard way that there's actually two screws up here that are kind of not hidden, but you wouldn't think would have anything to do with this panel. And I'm sure these vary from machine to machine and kind of different generations. And there's actually two screws right here that sit on top of the screen. Once you pull those, it will allow you to kind of slide this whole panel back and it has those kind of fasteners just so you know just kind of so you know what to expect how it goes back together how it comes apart once you are able to take that top panel off that exposes your vacuum feed which is this guy right here your sensor may also have some sort of uh, version of this foam insulation stuff really you just need to pull this up away from the sensor and just kind of pull it back on that wire and set it aside and I've seen a couple different versions of this. Again, this is a 2022 model, so this is the latest version, but you can see there's a little bit of uh, Teflon tape right here or sealant. There's probably also a couple of spots that can fail where this wiring goes in. And if you wanna be certain that this is your vacuum leak, Try the same method, spray some Windex or spray some carb cleaner, something like that in and around all of these areas and watch that mTOR level just like you've done in the, uh, the other tests. And before I show you how to diagnose this and repair this, I wanna make sure that you know this is do at your own risk. I'm just a guy on YouTube. I'm gonna show you how I was told how to repair this. That doesn't necessarily mean it's the only way. Always check with Harvest Right before you do this, especially if your machine is under warranty. So we're gonna take some tape. I'm gonna use masking tape or painter's tape, and I'm just gonna make a little funnel, or a dam is what I like to call it, around this area right here. And what that's gonna do, since it's under vacuum, is pull in that epoxy, pull in that silicone or whatever the sealant is. It's gonna plug up the leak wherever it's coming in. You're gonna let it sit under a vacuum for several hours until it has time to dry. And with, uh, with any luck, that solves your vacuum feed problem. Hopefully you didn't have to watch the video all the way to the end, but that is the entire vacuum system for the Harvest Right freeze dryer. I really hope this helps. I hope this is able to help thousands of people solve that stupid vacuum, inadequate vacuum error. It's very frustrating. Uh, in the meantime, this is Retired at 40. Remember to live life simple. Catch you next week.